Hi, this is Mahmood Nanji with another episode of Story of Success. Today we are talking to a lady who is a source of inspiration to a lot of women in Pakistan. Now before I introduce her to you, I want to tell you that she's had 24 years of experience and has gained credibility and insight into the beauty business through sheer skill and craft. She has educated herself and got herself trained to reach heights which no one in Karachi or Pakistan has reached. She has an idea of the international training, of the international trends and the local trends and she keeps herself updated every year. She travels extensively and attends courses mostly by Vidal Sassoon and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And every year, there is a different course that she attends, just to keep herself updated. She also manages image building for events. She uh, is an image manager for corporations. She manages images of individuals also. She was a brand ambassador for Unilever for a number of years, 12 years I think. And she is closely associated with L'Oreal, who was just introduced, who was just introduced in Pakistan recently. She has managed the immense. The, 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 she has managed the image of VJ's, uh, MTV, ARG, the music. She has managed top musicians, and she has decided not to end, even after reaching the kind of fame that she has uh, reached but she wants to go on. I don't want to tell you what she's going to go on. She's going to tell you herself. It is my privilege and honor to have on my show, Nabila. Welcome to the show, Nabila. Thank you. What a Thank pleasure you. it is to be here. Thank you. Nabila, I gave an introduction out of whatever I could get from the profile, which I have not done justice. But nevertheless, you have, you know, created a trend. There was a time when we, when I was small, I mean we used to go for a haircut and then there was a time of stylists and grooming yourself and then image building. And you've gone through all this exercise. This is an inspirational program. I want you to tell me your story. How did you start and how did you reach? What was your motivation? And I'll keep on asking you questions in between. But I want you to tell me how did you start into this? I can't really figure out when exactly I started because I think I started a lot earlier than I, and I, than I think I did. Um, as a child, I was a bit crazy and I was always... Crazy or creative? Crazy. 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 I mean, creative is usually uh, misunderstood as um, crazy, at least in our society, because there was something peculiar about me. I was always, uh, you know, the word for that would would hindsight thinking about it be innovative like I used to make nails out of chewing gum and I used to make lizards out of atta and I used to you know become a witch wearing iodex on my face etc so it was always a bit crazy and my my relatives thought that you know um, I was a real weird child I was always cutting my own hair. Cutting your own hair isn't that difficult cutting it from the back and the front? <laughs> it is very difficult I never said I was normal um, yes, it is difficult and I think that's, um, I always had bad haircuts as a, as a child and uh, by the time I was entering teens, I was doing a better job myself and I think at the age of um, 21, I finally decided that I should go and train in this field because I do a better job than anybody else. Even at the back of um, For hair? No, no, hair no, killing, no, regular schooling. But that was not your interest. Uh, no, I, 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 I've been through the grind, but I don't think I learnt anything because I was not ready to learn. So you so, only learn when you're ready to learn. And I would consider myself self-taught because I learnt what I wanted to learn, when I wanted to learn and the way I wanted to learn and continuing to learn. So, uh, I'm talking about my technical training. Ki, ke, at the age of 21, I realized by then I already had uh, two kids and my younger son uh, was just born. So, you know, I realized that I want to go and get technical training for this field so I could come back and do it professionally. Because by then a lot of neighbors, friends, 
relatives etc were asking for haircuts because I would do a better job than most of the qualified people. So that's uh, when I actually sold my diamond set from the wedding and I paid for my fees at Vidal Sassoon. Achha. Us waqt jab aap ne ye kiya, so what was the environment like? How many salons were there or was it a popular business or no? Or people used to just do it at home and I don't know because I always had bad haircuts, so I don't know who was good at that time. You never went to any salon or anything? I like always went to good salons. I went to the top salons and got bad haircuts. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, you so the business was there. We were spending money getting our hair cut and colored and permed and all of that. But I don't think we were getting the, uh, the service that we deserved. Okay, all right. And so that was the reason why I had to go and train for it because I said, you know, if, if I have the flair for it, then why not do it professionally? So you sold your diamond ring? I sold my diamond set. Diamond set? And uh, I paid for my fees. And what did you say He was very supportive. He was very supportive. And uh, my, my parents, my family, they were all very supportive. I mean, they, they were inquisitive to see what he was doing and what he was doing. Maybe some people didn't take me seriously because they thought it's just a, a, you know, a phase that I was going through. But I had to prove with time and, uh, and achievements that I was really serious about it. I had to do it very seriously. Considering that you were crazy? Uh, yes, yes. I had to be consistently crazy. Achha, now tell me. So you you went for this training and then you started uh, uh, your own uh, hair cutting business from home or did you have a, did you take a salon? Uh, good what? question. I was too young myself and I had two very young kids, you know, one was almost a newborn, the other one was just two years old. Um, so I, uh, I, I started, I, I lived in an apartment which had a servant's quarter right outside the door. Okay. So that quarter, I think it was eight by eight at maximum it was 8 by 8. That's where I started with one mirror, one plastic chair, a second hand air conditioner and a plank of wood where I would place my tools. And how did you advertise your... Uh, I didn't advertise. I haven't advertised to, to the date. I haven't advertised. So then how did your customers come? I mean people just I heard about you and they started coming. When you're good, uh, it's through word of mouth and that's the best kind of publicity. Uh, because before I trained and came back, I had a queue of people waiting. So there was immense expectations from me. But were you competitively priced? Uh, I started off with 75 rupees a haircut. Wow. Which was that the was cheapest. That was 23 years ago. Yeah, that was the cheapest. That was 20 rupees cheaper than the cheapest person I knew at a certain standard. So um, I remember when I had 75 se jab 100 kiya because I was sick and tired of giving 25 rupees change. Uh, because so I don't take tips. Tell me, if you were in an 8x8 room, mein, agar tum operate kar rahi thi, to you must be having only one chair and one... Uh, wo, so you were working you know, quite a few back hours. Back to back, back uh. to back. And very soon I was solidly booked throughout the day and 